Hey guys, a quick lesson on solving equations. We're going to do a few more examples here. Hello, everybody. Now, let's do this problem, okay? Uh, the first problem, we just want to solve a simple equation. This one's a cotangent. We'll kind of go through the basic steps of solving again as a reminder. So the first thing we do when we solve this is we get 2 theta over 3 equals the inverse cotangent, sorry, inverse cotangent of negative square root of 3. So once we get to a trig function equals a number, we take the inverse of each side. Now what's the inverse cotangent negative square root of 3? Well, if you remember our table, right, and I, I draw this over and over, and we show it over and over. We had these special angles. Okay. The one we care about is the, um, well, uh, it may not be the pi over 3. Pardon me on that. And then on this table, we had tangent, if you'll remember. And tangent was 0... 1 over square root of 3, 1, square root of 3, and undefined, okay? And then cotangent, we never actually wrote it on the table, is these in reverse, right? Because it's going to be the reciprocal, so it'll be undefined, and then square root of 3, and then 1, and 1 over square root of 3, and 0, okay? And so we want to look at this row for cotangent right here. And we want to look at the column that gives us square root of 3 for cotangent. And that's this one. So that's a pi over 6 angle. Now, cotangent uh, will have negative ratios in the third and fourth quadrant. So that's the other thing we need to think about, third and fourth quadrants, okay? Excuse me, I am not correct there. Pardon me. It will be the second and fourth quadrants. The first and third quadrants, it's positive like tangent. So the second and fourth quadrants are where this is negative. So that means we need the reference angle to be pi over 6 in the second and fourth quadrant. All right. And that would then be 5 pi over 6. If you think about the quadrant, you want this pi over 6 reference angle, and you want this one here. And that one there would be 11 pi over 6. Now, how did I know those? Um, it's pi over 6 of being a full revolution, right? Because the reference angle is pi over 6. And this is pi over 6 from being two full revolutions. So that would give us those two numbers. But those are not the answers to our problem. So, but they're on our way there. So, what we need to do is we need to go back to this part right here. So, I'm going to rewrite that in red. The zero less than or equal to theta less than two pi. Well, it turns out our inverse cotangent of negative square root of three is matched up with 2 theta over 3. So we've got to make this a 2 theta over 3. So the first thing I do is I multiply everything. Well, the easiest way is multiply everything by 2 thirds. Okay? So 0 times 2 thirds is 0. Theta times 2 thirds is 2 theta over 3. And 2 pi times 2 thirds is... 4 pi over 3. And so, if we now go back and look at the yellow triangle, 
our 2 theta over 3 has to be between 0 and 4 pi over 3, which is right here in the third quadrant. And we know that only the 5 pi over 6 is in that range. So we can come back to our problem up here and we can say 2 theta over 3 is equal to 5 pi over 6. Now that's how you do it if you have an angle that's not just theta. You got to you investigate which ones are going to potentially work for the correct quadrants. Then you investigate out of those, which ones do I actually need based on what the interval should be for this angle right here. Once you do that, you now have this equation here. And of course, we have to solve for theta. So what we would do is multiply both sides by 3 halves, right? And we get theta equals 15 pi over 12, which we can reduce to 5 pi over 4. And so this is our answer to the problem. Any questions? Those are good ones to bring to office hour on Monday, okay? So make sure you know how to do this problem. We did one like this before that was a two theta um, last lesson on Friday. Um, here's kind of a reminder. Um, all the other factoring and things we've done could happen as well. So let's move on to a new type of so, one of the things we notice about these uh, functions is if I want to solve an, a simple equation, let's do it, sine theta equals one-half. And this time, I don't tell you anything about theta. In other words, theta can be anything forever in all directions. Okay, so if I draw that out on a graph, let's just look at this for a moment. And I draw the sine of theta. And I kind of pretend to go on forever in the positive and the negative direction. Then one half, we know the maximum is at one. So one half would be this line right here. And if we look at that, from 0 to 2 pi, which is right here, we're only going to have these two solutions, which is what we would normally get. Sine theta is 1 half in the first and the second quadrant, and we would get pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And that would be correct. However, if I say theta can be anything, this line goes on forever in both directions, and I intersect this an infinite number of times. So what these are are equations without restrictions. And the question really is, how do you write the answers? Okay? And so let's do that. For this one right here, if we have sine theta equals 1 half, we would solve and get theta equals the inverse sine of 1 half. And then we go, okay, well, what is that? Well, we go to the table, and we would find 1 half, and we would see that that goes with pi over 6 in sine. So the inverse sine of 1 half is the angle pi over 6. But if we were pretending going from 0 to 2 pi, then we would say not only is it pi over 6, it's going to be the reference angle that gives us a positive pi over 6 as well, and that would be 5 pi over 6 in quadrant 2. So normally what we would say is this is theta equals pi over 6 
and 5 pi over 6 if we had these restrictions, but we don't. So what you would do is then you would rotate around. So here's pi over 6. And so you would rotate around 2 pi. So you'd add 2 pi to that. And then you'd rotate around. And you'd add 2 pi again. And then we could be at 5 pi over 6. And we could rotate around for that. 2 pi and go around 2 pi again. So how would you write these as general answers? Well, you would say pi over 6 plus 2 pi times what? Times a multiple of 2 pi. So 2 pi in could be 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, but it could also be 0, or negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 6 pi. So this represents all possible solutions on this blue line. And if I write it like that, then I just need to say n is an integer, which means it could be a positive or negative number. In the same way, this is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. And that would get us, now all we're ever adding is multiples of 2 pi to both of these, and that gives us the infinite set of all the solutions. Okay? All right, we're going to do a couple more of these. Okay, here's an equation, a little slightly more difficult than the last one. Cosine squared 2 theta equals 1 half. Okay? So, and this could have been, I could have wrote this as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. We, we'd add 1, divide by 2, and now we're at the stage where we take the square root of both sides. So we get the cosine of 2 theta equals the square root of 1 half. Now, the square root of 1 half is square root of 1 over square root of 2, which is 1 over square root of 2, which is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, because you can multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So what I did is I simplified the radical, okay? So then I can say 2 theta is equal to the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2. Now, cosine has positive ratios in the first and the fourth quadrant. And according to our table, the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 in the first quadrant is pi over 4. And in the fourth quadrant is 7 pi over 4. So you check that to make sure. Now, this is what 2 theta is equal to, okay? Now, we are solving this for an infinite number of thetas, okay? So, um, we need to add 2 pi times any integer to each of these because we can go around the circle and end up back at the same angle. Now, but we haven't solved for theta yet. We now have to divide this all by 2. So theta is equal to pi over 8 plus pi times n and 7 pi over 8 plus pi times n. Okay? Now notice, uh, basically what I did is I divided everything by 2. Another way to think about that is I multiplied both sides by 1 half. Okay? And so 1 half times pi over 4 is pi over 8. 1 half times 2 pi n is pi n. Okay? So what do these answers look like? Sometimes 
they're going to ask you to list the first six answers. So if I add pi to pi over 8, so I get pi over 8, and then adding pi is 8 pi over 8, then I get 9 pi over 8, and then I add 8 pi over 8 again, which would give me 17 pi over 8, etc. dot, dot, dot. Okay, so these are examples of what this answer here looks like. And then we do the same thing down here. We'd have 7 pi over 8. And then we'd add 8 pi over 8 and get 15 pi over 8. And then we'd add 8 pi over 8 pi again, which would then be uh, 23 pi over 8. And now... That and then that would go on forever, that less. And again, these are three examples of what those solutions look like. So now we'd like to check our answers, okay? And so what I do is I pick like something down the list, like 9 pi over 8. So 2 times that is 9 pi over 4. The cosine of 9 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Well, okay, 9 pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. And so it's square root of 2 over 2. And then you square that, which gives you 2 over 4. Okay? And 2 over 4 is equal to 1 half, so it checks. And then you could try it with 15 pi over 8. 2 times that is 15 pi over 4. Okay, which is in the fourth quadrant, still positive, and you square that, all right, and you get uh, 2 over 4 again, which is 1 half. So they're kind of checking. So I'm comfortable that I'm doing the right thing, okay? Any questions about this? That would be a good thing to come to office hour with, all right? So here we go for our last example. 4 cosine theta equals negative 3. Cosine theta equals negative 3 fourths. And theta is equal to negative 3 fourths. Oops, sorry. Inverse cosine of negative three-fourths. Who knows what I was trying to write. There we go. Now, we want to calculate what the inverse cosine of this is. Now, what I want you to notice is this is not a special angle. Okay? It isn't. But I want to think about it like it is. Okay? I'd like to first figure out from 0 to 2 pi, what would the solution be? Well, this is the solution. Theta is equal to this. Now, it has a decimal equivalent, which I could check. All right? And I could write, and I'm just going to write, you can do this on your calculator, but I'm just going to write the word decimal. Okay? that that's what theta is equal to. It's equal to the decimal, whatever that is. It's approximately equal to that. Now, if I was going 0 to 2 pi, this is a negative. So I would have a second quadrant angle and a third quadrant angle for the answer because that's where cosine is negative, right? So the inverse cosine of a negative comes from the second or fourth quadrant. This decimal is an angle, okay, in radians. It's being measured in radians. So make sure your calculator is in radians if you punch this in. All right? And it, this decimal represents whatever the size of that angle is in radians. Okay? Now, when you punch this on your calculator, it's only going to give you the answer to this first one. 
Okay? So how do you get the answer to the second one? Well, you take pi... Um, hang on a sec. Oh, you take 2 pi and you subtract the decimal. Okay, so remember, this is your angle, and this here is your reference angle. So this is the angle you get, which gives you this terminal side. If you take 2 pi minus that, you'll be subtracting this off, and that'll give you this terminal side. Okay, so this is your second answer. We typically we'll get two answers like that for theta for a positive or a negative. So we have one answer and a second answer. Okay. Now what do I do? Well, if if I this was zero less than or equal to two or less than or equal to theta less than two pi, then I'd be done. All right, but since it's not that, it's all of them, I need to go on from there. And so how do I get the next answer? Well, I get the next answer by going around the circle 2 pi, right? And again and again. So my final answer would be decimal plus 2 pi n where n is an integer, okay? And my other answer would be 2 pi minus decimal plus 2 pi n because I would also go around the circle 2 pi over and over, okay? And so there's my two answers. Now, if you wish, you see this 2 pi here plus this 2 pi n. So you're adding an extra 2 pi. So you could say negative decimal plus 2 pi plus 1 n. Is that right? Now, and you get one. Oops, I got the one in the wrong spot. Let me fix that. Um, and do just a little erasing here. So um, it's 2 pi plus times 1 plus n. Because you're having an extra 2 pi right here. So you put 1 plus n. Okay? Pick any integer. That will give you your answers. Now, if you have questions on this problem... Come to office hours. So you should be good. You should be able to do your lessons. I'll post this video tonight. And it'll be up for you tomorrow. All right. I will see you in office hours with your questions. Bye.